When we meditate, we try to bring our minds into the present moment. We don't take the present moment as our goal. It's part of the path. Being mindful, getting the mind concentrated on the breath. That's all path. And the whole point of the path, as the Buddha said, is that it's going to bear fruit. So how do you get the most out of the present moment? When the Buddha talks about being in the present, many times it's in the context of death contemplation. And just realizing that we don't know how much time we have left. And there's work to be done. The mind needs to be straightened out. And how much longer we'll have to do that, we don't know, but we do know that we have right now. So thinking about the present moment is a lesson in heedfulness. The Buddha says there are duties to be done right now. Of course, the duties refer to the duties of the Four Noble Truths. To what extent have we yet to comprehend suffering, abandon its cause, realize its cessation, or develop the path? That's something we have to take stock of. And then figure out what needs to be done right now. Right now you're trying to develop the path. As for anything that would pull you off the path, look, think of that as something to be abandoned. This is why it's important to know how to relate to the past. Because some parts of the past are relevant to what you're doing right now and some are not. This is what mindfulness is for, to remember. When you've meditated on the breath before, how did you get good results? Try to relax around the breath. Don't make the meditation too much of a chore. Think of it as an opportunity to just breathe easy. Each breath is another opportunity to breathe easy. When the mind can rest a bit, then it can look at itself more clearly. So whatever lessons you've learned in how to let the breath rest with the breath, and let that sensation of resting spread out. Okay, remember that. Then, of course, there'll be a lot of other things from the past that come up that are not really relevant right now. Those are things you want to put aside. And particularly, think of things you may have done in the past. And it's very easy when the mind is quiet for these things to come intruding in. Things that you've done that you're not all that happy about. You feel embarrassed about it. Sometimes you feel even ashamed. You think of how much of your life you've frittered away with one thing or another. In terms of the really unskillful things you've done in the past, the Buddha said the right attitude is to remember they're in the past. Going back and digging them up right now is not going to help unless you find that you can learn a lesson as to how not to repeat that mistake. But remorse is not going to help get rid of the problem. He also says it's very unskillful to think, well, that must be my past karma is going to come and get me sometime. Karma is a lot more fluid than that. The best you can do is to remind yourself that that was a mistake, I don't want to repeat it. And then spread lots of goodwill. Goodwill for yourself, goodwill for the people you've harmed, goodwill for everybody all around. Because otherwise, if you sit here berating yourself about things you've done in the past, it weakens the mind. And when the mind is weak, it's more likely to do more unskillful things in the future. So goodwill for yourself. Goodwill for others, so that you remind yourself, I don't want to commit that mistake again. 
and then you get back to what you're doing right now. So because we're sitting here with our eyes closed right now, the, the duty right now is to develop the concentration. Sometimes a craving comes up and you can let it go. Suffering comes and you begin to try to analyze it. That's what the Buddha said you have to do with, with pain and suffering, is to comprehend it. What is the suffering? There are so many different cessations and ideas that all get glommed together when the mind is in pain. And you have to figure out what, where exactly is the pain. The Buddha lists all kinds of things that we can suffer over, aging, illness, death, separation. But then its conclusion is something really unusual. It says the, the suffering is in the clinging. Suffering is an activity, something we actively do. In the midst of all that, there is that activity of clinging. And that's where the real suffering is. If we can find that, ferret it out, and ask ourselves, why are we clinging? You look to the craving that underlies it, and then you can let it go. So anything comes up that burdens the mind, you might ask yourself exactly where is the clinging in here? And don't let yourself get waylaid by uncomfortable sensations, because those are not the real suffering. The real suffering is in the clinging. Something you have to ferret out if you're going to be able to identify what the craving is that goes behind it. That's when you can let it go. So these are the duties we do right now as we're meditating. But we won't be sitting here with our eyes closed all the time. As we go through life, we'll find there are other duties that we have to take care of. But you can see them as part of the, the duties of the Noble Truths. In particular, whatever goodness you may want to develop in terms of generosity, virtue, all the qualities that are called perfections, those are things you develop. That's the duty there. And that way your life away from formal practice is not wasted. We have only so much time. But we also have duties that are imposed on us, either from outside or things we've taken on. So you have to realize, in a given situation, what is the goodness I can develop here? What is the unnecessary suffering I'm imposing on myself around this duty? What am I holding on to that's making it hard? Years back when I was at Wat Dhamma Siddhi, I was working on a translation of a John Lee. And I'd be working away, and all of a sudden the John Fuang would get sick, so I'd have to drop the translation. And I found that I was suffering unnecessarily because I really wanted to get that translation done. And the John Fuang's illness became an obstacle. Then I finally realized that that was not the obstacle. The obstacle was the clinging to the project I had. I had other duties at that time, and I had to learn how to let go of the other things I was clinging to if I was going to, one, do the duty well, and two, not suffer from it. So when you find that you have a duty and you're suffering from it, ask yourself, what's the problem? Where's the real problem? Learn how to ferret that out. And you find that you can do, to, do the duty much better, and you develop good qualities of mind. There are a lot of things in the world that need to be done that are not getting done, because people don't like to do them. If you find something like that, remind yourself, here's your chance to do something good, and nobody's going to compete with you for it. And you have the satisfaction of realizing that something that had to be done got done. And you were able to develop good qualities in the mind at the same time, determination, persistence, endurance, truthfulness.
goodwill for the people who would benefit from getting the duty done. Equanimity toward the things that you would rather be doing. You realize that you can't have your, your rathers all the time. When you can think in this way, then everything in the life becomes a part of the practice. None of your time is wasted. Our problem is that we have time and we squander it. Even though that time may be very little. In this way, older people sometimes are better off than younger people. Older people know they don't have much time left. Sometimes younger people don't have much time left either, but they don't know. There's that assumption that normal lifespan is so so long. But who knows? There's no guarantee that the older people go first. So remember, we have only a little time, and there's a lot to be done, primarily inside the mind, but there are other duties outside as well. So each of us will have to develop a sense of priorities as to what really needs to be done. And how to make the most of a Dharma lesson or a Dharma profit, you might say, out of it. It sounds a little materialistic, but then the Buddha himself used the word, word inner wealth and used images of inner wealth many times in his teachings. Goodwill, he said, is a form of wealth. Conviction, a sense of shame, in other words, realizing that certain actions are beneath you, that's a form of wealth. Compunction. The attitude that's not apathetic about the results of your actions, that really does want to do things well. Virtue, learning, right effort. These things are all, all kinds of wealth that we de develop inside. These are the things that we can get out of the present moment. If we use the present well, remember it's there to be used, it's not there just to hang out. But the idea, well, this is what it's all about, and this is all we have to do. Just be in the present moment. That's abusing the present moment. Hiding away from your responsibilities, hiding away from your duties. Hiding away from the things that you really could get done that would be to your benefit and the benefit of others. Regard the present moment as a means to an end. and then squeeze all the goodness you can out of it. That's a John Mahabhu's recommendation. As people are getting older, he says, even though there are certain things that you used to be able to do with the body you can't do anymore, still there's a lot of goodness you can squeeze out of this body before you have to give it back. That's the profit you can get if you use the present moment well.